Okay. So there you go. So actually, I would like to um, I wanted to talk about this drive geometry today, but uh, I would like to talk a little bit about four poles. So Claudio four poles. Um, so what we know about multiply space, multiply space uh, coherent sheets, coherent sheets on on C Y three, C Y four is that again what gives you the obstruction theory of this thing is the natural complex Arham. Uh, F, F, like that, R pi over star. This is the complex in the drive category. Pi is the morphism from the moduli space times the variety to the moduli space itself. And this thing actually gives you cap gives you the you know, obstruction theory. So. If you take cohomologies of this E dot, I mean, this could be actually E dot dual, in other words. If you take the cohomologies of this E dot dual, for instance, you look at the, you know, fibers over a point, fibers over a point are on the moduli space, the cohomologies obviously capture the deformations, and the, in general, deformation theory of sheets on the board. So you will have I just want to write down this heuristic picture so that you actually know uh, what is going on. So you have this thing, okay? You have these X groups, and these X groups, if your variety is a Calabial four-fold, these X groups are dual of each other. You know, these two are dual, and these two are dual. And assuming that the sheaves F are stable, Okay, these, these things are just given by C. So there is actually a way to get rid of these. We can ignore these things for now. So there are several different mechanisms that you can ignore. So, ah, actually X3 also, and then X4, sorry. So this is this. So this is dual to the X4, and then X1 is dual to X3. Okay, and then x2, so these are ser dual, ser dual with, with one another, and x2 is self dual. Okay, x2 is self dual, and so this structure actually, already from here, you can actually see that on the moduli space M, there exists a shifted minus two symplectic structure. Okay, so that is what you can you know. And in fact using using Joyce's Darbo theorem by result of Borisov and Joyce you can locally locally M is critical locus of a graded potential. So this is actually degree to shifted potential. Okay, we are not going to work with any of these things here. And I'm just going to tell you what these things are. And so if you wanted to construct a virtual cycle using the language of Guy Barrett and Fontecki, you will actually have things like x1, x2, and x3. And there is no way of getting rid of this. All right? So you have a non-perfect, non-perfect three-term obstruction theory. And in fact, the first people who uh, studied some, something like this uh, were I mean, kind of coming up with a recipe of what to do 
where Yalong Sao, Yalong Sao and Conan Leung, or Conan Leung, who were the first people who basically said what to do. But I should tell you that this idea, I don't think, uh, I think this idea goes even more back, and I think originally, Richard Thomas, Richard Thomas, in a paper on higher dimensional gauge theory with Simon Donaldson, actually studied uh, this situation. So the, the, the idea was that if you can show that this one can be written as sum of two real half-dimensional spaces V, so isotropic subspaces V and V dual, then in general you can actually think of uh, an object in the derived category which produces cohomologies with X1 and V, and somehow you would like to think of this as being the inducing the Cronichi structure for your moduli space. Okay? And then the reason that you need this duality. Roughly speaking, you will say that if I can capture the virtual cycle theory from half of this complex, the other half is just a dual one. Because this one is the dual of this one, and V is the dual of V dual. Okay? So, okay, so you can locally think of these Kronishi, local Kronishi structures on your modular space and induce some virtual cycles out of those things, and then try to glue. And gluing of this thing needs uh, derived geometries. Whether you can glue it or not, you need derived geometries. Okay, so Yalong Tan and Kon and Leong worked out the case where, using the idea, original, I think brilliant, idea of Richard Thomas and Donaldson, they worked out the situation where these sheets are bundles, but that's too restrictive in the sense that Often, a bundle, after some deformation, might not remain as a bundle. It becomes a sheet anyway. And so, it was Borisov and Joyce who actually worked out the construction. But every construction has also okay. So I, this is all I, I just want to say. Okay. So this is uh, basically virtual modular theory on the Kalavia form. There is a lot of activity on four holes in, involving this person, Yalong Sao, these days. Yalong is in Oxford, and he's uh, writing several papers with Dalish Malik and Yoshinobu Doda, and uh, Marta and Kuhl as well. So these are all names that you can look at. Marta and Kuhl, and Toda, and Malik. And they are actually using this idea of splitting this thing in the, in the half. Um, also, they have lots of conjectures about enumerative invariance of Kalavi Alpha for mod line spaces. Okay, so that is, these are the things I just wanted to tell you. You can, you know, if you are interested, you can go after it with them. Okay? But in particular today, I want to actually show you how Kalavi Alpha 4 story can be reduced to Kalavi Alpha 3. So I think in the string theory, gauge reduction is actually a very useful thing. So I would like to do somehow reduction of my theory in string theory. So to go find situations, find examples where the T theory of Calabria four hole can reduce to the theory of a Calabria 3. Okay. Or actually in a, just a threefold, not not necessarily Calabria. So the theory of a smooth threefold. It used to be the fact that you needed to define the Allison Thomas theory for Calabria manifolds, but you don't need to these days because you can enter the appropriate homology classes. 
if it is not Calabi-Alp-3, then its virtual dimension might be higher dimensional, but then you can find appropriate classes based on the dimension of the other side. Okay. So here is what I wanted to tell you a little bit about, I'm going to show you a situation where you can reduce this theory. So let me tell you a little bit about algebraic, algebraic uh, ingredients for constructing virtual cycles. So let's talk a little bit uh, about a TF class. What's a TF class? So start with a um, smooth projective um, variety X. Embed X, this we have done before, embed X diagonally inside its self fiber uh, uh, X times X. And so again, look at the structure sheet of the, uh, you know, double neighborhood of X inside there. So basically, this is O of x times x divided by, you know, in, in I of delta squared. So this is the structure sheet sheet of the first order neighborhood neighborhood of the diagonal in x times x. All right, so remember that when we were discussing about loop stacks and so on, we actually worked with this. Okay, so then you can, uh, then we have a short exact sequence. Then consider the short exact sequence. Which is, you know, O of two delta, the first order neighborhood surjects onto algebra of the diagonal itself, and obviously the kernel of this thing is I of delta modulo I of delta squared. This is obvious because this is O of x cross x times over I squared, and this is O of x plus x over I, and the kernel is I mod I squared. This is the conormal sheet of diagonals inside there. And so now one thing you can do, you can look at these projection maps. So let x times x, let's look at the product of x with itself, and projection onto x via these two projection maps p1 and p2. Okay? And so now let f be a coherent sheet on x. Then uh, the short exact sequence above, short exact sequence remains uh, exact after pulling back. So remains exact by. So, uh, so something that you can do, you can actually, you have this thing, here everything is written as a OX plus X module, right? Here you can take everything like that. And then one thing before I, 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 before I finish that sentence, one thing you can do, this already has been written here, right? So one thing you can do is you can, for instance, you can just push forward via one of these projection maps, push forward to x itself. If you do that, you will get O of x, and you will get the push forward of O of 2 delta, right? Push forward, and then you will get the canonical, this is literally the canonical bundle of x, uh, sorry, cotangent, but sheaf of favor differentials of x, and you will get basically this. Oh, okay. So, all right, so that's that. Not only that, so okay, so it gives you some extension, 
And this is a point inside the group that parameterizes these extensions, and that is basically this. This literally is a tier class, a tier class of X, a tier class. All right. Now, you can take a sheet, so let F be a sheet in a coherent sheet on X, then this short exact sequence remains exact by tensoring the pullback of the sheet up on the x times x. So you will get something like this. And then Look at something like that. And then you can push it forward again. So this after pushing forward by P lower star one, the other projection bound, what did you get? You will again get you get F back is coming from x, so we get f back, and we get the something in the middle, p1 lower star of p2 upper star of f, right, tensor of the co of 2 delta, and then here we will get f tensor shift of Kähler differentials of x. And, okay, again, this short exact sequence belongs as a point to the group that parameterizes these, these and that is the x1 from f to f tensor Taylor differential device. Okay. Uh, so this is whose extension class class of F. The Atia class of X really is the Atia class of the structure sheet of X, but for any coherent sheet on X, you can define Atia class of that sheet, and it's given by the extension class that this short exact sequence defines. So I have just given you the definition of this name. This is, I told you what Atia class is. But I haven't told you what it measures. Now, what does it measure? So this Atia class, you can actually use the notation like this. Atia class of F. So what does it measure? What does it measure? Notice that P2 inverse induces a map. So let's say I have X. Here I have F, which is a sheet on X. Okay, any coherent sheet can have local sections. So I look at some local neighborhood inside X, and then my sheep will have locally sections on that view, right? And so then I can look at local sections of F, and then I realize that P2 inverse gives me a map from local sections of F on U to local sections of X times U intersected with the diagonal of this sheet right oh by the way sorry why didn't you say so so p2 upper star that's the o of two, 2 delta this is the this is the okay so if I have p2 
two enders, and I have a sheet, then I can pull back the sheet up there and serve with this back. The key to enders gives me a map that, with which I can lift the sections, local sections of that, to local sections of what? U is inside X. Up there, it is X times X. But then it will be X times U. But tensoring this thing with O of 2 delta tells me the restriction, the sections, if any, of this sheet up there over this neighborhood because it's in this network neighborhood of delta that is it. Okay. But then you can use the projection formula. And you immediately realize that this is the same as sections of over u, which project this back down, sections over u of p one lower star of the P2 upper star of F tensor to O of 2 delta. Okay. So what does this imply? Look at this thing. So by projection formula, a choice of P2 inverse gives, it seems like it's giving me a map from sections of F to sections of this sheet. Right? Which provides a splitting a splitting of the short exact sequence sequence Give it a name, let's give it a name, star, short exact sequence star, in which case if S is a all x linear splitting, then I can define the map S minus P2 inverse, and I can call this map nabla. And this map will map my F. Well, it's local sections of F in here. It maps this guy to here. That makes this guy split, so I can then project from here to this piece. So it gives me a map from F to F tensor omega of x. Isn't that interesting? Which is a connection, algebraic connection, on F, on this sheet. what the connection is. <laughs> right? And and in fact, so as you can see, this is splitting of this short exact sequence immediately induces an algebraic connection on F, and hence a T of class of F is the class is, is realized as a, is realized is the extension class, extension class, uh, which detects obstructions to defining, to having algebraic connection so the ATIA class this guy 
gives you the instructions to having a connection on it. So there is a vector space worth of such obstructions, and this is that vector space of obstructions not having a connection on it, and a tier class is a point of this vector. So more to say about this connection, more on this connection, more on NABLA. It satisfies, it satisfies, for instance, the Leibniz, the Leibniz rule. For instance, if you take Something like this, it satisfies uh, this property. So for some function defined by sections of that. More generally, now here is where you can actually, and this, I, I'm, I'm telling you these things because we are trying to. Eventually, maybe with a one week gap or something, we will be moving to Donaldson, to Donaldson Ulebrich Gal correspondences and so on, having connections on bundles and objects in the direct category. This is why we are discussing this. But before that, I just want to show you some applications of this thing at your class in neurotic geometry and Donaldson Thomas theory. So, more, more generally, your F, in fact, could be an element of direct category. Could have some object in the direct category back. So if F is an, uh, an object there, is a complex of locally Cauchy's, we get zero F dot. And so the comma the x, p1 lower star, p2 upper star of f dot cancel with o of 2 delta, and then f dot like that. And you in fact see that immediately that this again defines for you an Atiyah class for the complex of locally free sheets. So we get then defining defining a defining a class the a tier class of a dot in the x1 group over x of the f dot f dot tensor tangent bundle of x for tangent and this group, in fact, is the same isomorphic to the homomorphism group in the bounded drag category of X from F dot to F dot tensored with scalar differential from X shifted by 1. So, in fact, this thing is nothing but space of morphisms from here to here. And uh, now there is this is all the case if you have a smooth variety. If you have a smooth variety X, then if you have something like this, a complex, you can define an algebraic connection on that complex. Maybe you can, maybe you cannot. There's obstructions to defining it, and that's a tier class that takes the obstruction is a point in the vector space of those obstructions. This is basically the tier class. Okay. Uh, now, what if your x is not a smooth? Um, so, if x not a smooth, then eventually, now we are in the drive algebraic geometry course, we know that we can always detect singularities of x 
I am betting that something is smooth. So we always can can in that exercise some ambient smooth thing. You can take the derived uh, resolution of x, and that gives you an injective embedding of x as something is smooth. You can do whatever you want. And then the cotangent bundle of this x, this is smooth guy, you can pull it back to x, and that captures the cotangent complex of x. So in fact, cotangent complex of x, not a smooth variety, for instance, is basically something that in degree 0 has this sheet. And then it has conormal sheaf of x. So let's say I, this ideal of x in A, is, I call it by i. It has a conormal sheaf sitting in degree minus 1. But then it has more things. And we calculated one example of this thing before. OK. So then for the cotangent complex, you can truncate it. So that is defined by i mod i squared x piece of truncation for well. I didn't write it like this. Be the truncation. L dot x in degree bigger than equal to minus 1, then for this thing, I can actually use this truncated cotangent complex to define a notion of a tier class. So then we can define n. And we can define then similarly we can define truncated a tier class of F by uh, something like this. This is given as a point inside the spectral space where you have f, and then you have f derived tensor product, f tensor product, uh, with truncated cotangent complex of x. This is the uh, same as a homomorphism in the bounded drive category from f to F tensor fact. Okay, so if X is not a smooth, again, there is a version of a defining a connection for an object in the drug category of X. You can define a connection on that object. That's given by a morphism from F to F tensor derived tensor over L dot X. Okay? It has Interesting relation to push it forward in the ambient to smooth, drive the stack, and look at the connection there. You can do that. But anyways, this is algebraic connection on this object in the draft category. And for my applications, I'm going to truncate the cotangent complex in degree bigger than minus 1. You, would, you, you can say why. And I can just show you that there is good reasons for it. Because with this object, I can do intersection theory, calculate the invariance. I don't need to prove cotangent. So I'm just defining for now again what is this ATIA class is. This is the truncated ATIA class. So if you use non smooth space, scheme, variety, stack, you use the cotangent complex but truncation of it, then for every object in the drive category, you can actually define a notion of truncated ATIA class. Okay. Another thing is also this notion of universe, uh, you know, uh, relative truncated. So this universal, universal relative truncated, relative truncated at your class. 
Now, what is that? Well, let's say we have a space which looks like x times y with projections on the x and y. Okay? And then on here, I have a sheet. The reason I call it universal because often my y could be a moduli space. And on the x times y, I will have the universal object and ground class. Okay, so now for this sheaf in here, I can define obviously a connection, and I can look at the obstructions for having that connection. I can define a notion of, and this sheaf could be an object in the bounded drive category of this thing, like universal sheets or like that. And then I can define a tier class or truncated a tier class of this thing. I can also define a version relative to y, and what is that? So if I have something like this, there is this notion of uh, universal truncated NTO class, which is basically given as follows. So, so first of all, truncated NTO class, the class of this F is basically given by as a point inside here, L dot of x times y, okay? Now, you can ask what is the cotangent complex of x times y, that is the pullback, let's call these things P1 and P2, that's the pullback of cotangent complex of x plus cotangent complex of y, so in particular, there is a projection map from here to a projection onto the second factor to the pullback of cotangent complex of y. So via this projection, you can basically project this thing. So you get a map from, so if you write down everything in the derived category, you can actually see that x1 f times f times l dot of x times y is the same as homomorphism from f to f tensor, everything is derived to derived tensor, l dot of x plus y, x times y, and then you can project this thing, or shift it by one, and then you can project this thing to homomorphism in the bounded drive category of x times y to F to F tensor pullback of L dot of Y should be by one. And if you really think about it for just simple geometry, L dot of Y is nothing but L dot of X times Y over X. Right? Because L dot of X maps to L dot of X plus Y, and the cone between them is L dot of Y. So this is the notion of the relative one. So this is the Atiyah class. Atiyah class is a point in here. Atiyah class of F is, this is the Atiyah class of F, truncated one, or everything is truncated, and then X times Y relative That is what I want to say. So, okay. so, so well, I mean x times y relative to x. I'm sorry. Okay. So uh, this object. object is often useful when this y is the moduli space moduli space of sheets or algebraic algebraic objects on Okay. All right. So
So this is that. And now I want to tell you more. So now let's look at actually an example. So how is this ATIA class relate to so any relation? Let, let y be the moduli space of sheets on x. So let's say stable sheets on x with churn character fixed. So let us now see what does this ATIA class do? Write the ATIA class. Um, any relation between truncated ATIA class of the universal sheet of x times m over x and deformation of Sutton theory. Okay. Let's see. So let us write down. So we have x, we have the moduli space, we have pi 1, and we have pi 2. And let us assume that the stability of the sheaves, we are assuming that we, there is a universal sheaf over the moduli. Now consider this ATIA class of the universal sheet, relative ATIA class, truncated ATIA class. This is an object in the homomorphisms in here between F tilde and F tilde tensor product with a pi 2 upper star of L dot of M, truncated at degrees bigger than minus, bigger than equal to minus one. Now, see what happens. If you use Verdier duality, by Verdier duality, you can actually see that this is the same as homomorphisms in the I can push forward things down on, on M. On the bounded draft category of M, so if I push down everything, these will be R pi, or let's call this R pi of M, and R pi of X is better this way. Pi of M. It's coming, pulling back from M. So I can pull, push forward these things to R pi M lower star, of R hom F tilde uh, R pi over star of F tilde and then R pi F over star of F tilde tensored with L dot of M itself And, uh, but then there would be a shift. They would be a shift by uh, dimension minus, I think, minus dimension of x. Any questions here? I'm just pushing forward. So this thing is on x plus m. I have this complex which I pulled back from M. I want to push forward onto M. This, so th this produces complex on M again, and these two things will be pushed down. Now I can use the adjoinness property of tensor product, derived tensor product, and derived homomorphisms. And so this immediately actually gives me something like. Basically, a homomorphism, uh, which is isomorphic to homomorphism in the bounded drive category of M from 
R pi over star of R hump F tilde F tilde shifted by the relation of X to L dot dot lambda. So this this thing can go there. F dot comma G dot tensor B dot can be the same as homomorphism from R hump F dot G dot to B dot. So this is what you will get. And this shift in here, I move to the contrarian further, so this minus becomes a plus. And the Verdier duality always has this shifting by the relative dimension. And the relative dimension of this projective morphism is the dimension of X. Verdier duality always has that. Verdier duality also has the canonical, relative canonical bundle. So you always actually twist this thing by relative dualizing shift. Dualizing shift in here is the pullback of the canonical bundle of X. But X in my story today has been assumed to be a Calabial, Calabial four-fold. This canonical is just trivial O. So in the Verdier duality, I don't see anything. This is all. So there is a lot to say about Verdier duality, but I assume that you know what it is. There is this shift by the relative dimension, and there is also the shift by the relative dualizing. And it's the canonical of X. Okay, so let's just write down this thing. So you will get this map on M, P of M from R pi M. Uh -huh. F to oh, wait a minute. You did you didn't tell me, right? You did not tell me. Do you know what you didn't tell me? There's always a shift by one here. And there is also a shift by one in here. And there is always a shift by one in here. Because it's coming from a TL class. I can change things into homomorphism, but I shouldn't change things. Okay. So the dimension of x minus 1 is L dot of m tau to the other is going to minus 1. OK, so this is wonderful. Have we seen this thing before? This, have we seen it before? Have you seen it before? Complex in the drive category, an object in the drive category is modified just to get in the map to truncate the potential complex. Well, I mean, one can show that. One can show that. E dot H0 basically, H0 of phi of M is an isomorphism. And H minus 1 of P of M is an epimorphism. So this E dot for the deformation of structure theory on M. Isn't that interesting? You compute the ATL class, use the E duality, push down things on M, naturally induces to you for you the morphism from the objects whose cohomologies do detect the deformations and obstructions of deformation. But all, not only that, also with the map, because the theory, we discussed this, the theory is not the theory if you don't have it. However, is this thing perfect deformation obstruction theory? No, I didn't say that. Is it two term? I didn't say that. It's just a theory that captures deformations and obstructions, but there might be obstructions to obstructions. And in fact, this is the case. This guy, if you put dimension of x equal to 4, you will see it has, you know, x1 makes to x3. It's non-perfect real obstruction, but it's a deformation obstruction theory. It's just non-perfect. So that's what 
that good. But, okay, so what? Well, so far nothing new. Now some facts about this. Uh, here's some remark. When d is equal to 3, let's say complex dimension is equal to 3, complex dimension of x is equal to 3, uh, when determinant of f is fixed, uh, the induced morphism morphism, the induced morphism to reduce uh, the induced morphism P of M gives a gives a just a perfect two term deformation of structure. Uh, this is case one. Case two, in case where, in case where x3 of f uh, vanished of d, in case where We have f. Um, vanishes. Yes. Yeah. Vanishes. Hoy, Briggs, and Thomas. Thomas provide. of this complex E dot, which is which induces a virtual cycle. In fact, uh, this is the case, this is why after this amazing result, their result actually shows that you don't need uh, Calabialis. So if x is Calabial and you can determine, you know, you can fix the determinant of f, then honest to God, it gives you a complex with only two vanishing, not vanishing cohomologies because hom is zero and x3 is zero by ser duality. But they even extended that result to this case where only thing that we know is x3 vanishes. And then it actually, a nice truncation of this complex would give us the virtual side. So these are the results on the three folds. Then we have this theory of four folds, and it is the same complex that has x1, x2, x3, and you need to split it in the half, and that's the realm of drive geometry. So this is the usual thing. But now, let us, let us do something else. So now, The special case let us say that let X let Y be a smooth plus projective projective variety of dimension D. And let's x be total the space of canonical bundle of y on y, and i be the zero section embedding of y and x. Let's say you are in this situation. Then let us consider let m be the moduli space 
modulated space of coherent sheaves on X with proper support. On Y, such that F is with proper support, well, with proper support such that F is uh, skin theoretically supported on Y. Okay, so I have some modular theory. On X, X is a non-compact variety of dimension D plus 1. Y is a smooth quasi-projective variety of dimension D. And I'm looking at, this is Y, and I'm just looking at X. This is my X. This is the canonical of Y. y. And I'm looking at sheaves which are supported on me. Torsion sheaves. So these sheaves are skin theoretical support on All right, so for instance, for me later, this Y is going to be a complex triple. This is six dimensional. This one is as a manifold, a real manifold, six dimensional. This one is eight dimensional. As complex variety, a complex triple with a fourfold that sits inside the fourfold, non compact fourfold. Okay. So then what can I do? So, what is this a statement? This means that, uh, in other words, F is always written as push forward of some G. G uh, is a stable with proper support. Bundles could be things which are supported on curves on Y, could be things for anything, anything you want. Okay. Now, somewhat, you can imagine that it's almost the case that the moduli space is just moduli space of sheaves on Y. Right? It's true, in fact. And so you have this thing. I mean, you can look at the moduli space of these things, these sheets, following mg, and then you have the moduli space of these sheets, but these sheets are pushed forward of sheets which are clearly supported on y, and in fact, these two moduli spaces are the same, and I'm just calling it m. However, there are two different types of obstruction theories that you can associate to the same moduli space. One is to realize sheaves as torsion sheaves on X, and the other is to realize sheaves as sheaves on Y, torsion or not. So you will obtain P of X, so two choices of obstruction theory. So we obtain, we obtain two obstruction theories. On M, one is R pi M, R hum F F shifted by D minus one to L dot of M, and the other one is R pi M, R hum G G. Shifted by d minus 2, in fact. Dimension of x minus 1, right? Dimension of x minus 1. So this was the choice of obstruction theory by our construction, right? Um, so d minus 2, l dot of m. Okay. So now I need to tell you about comparisons, comparison between 
t of x and t of y. I mean, let's call this thing t dot of x. Let's call this thing t dot of modules of y. And I would like to compare t dot of x and t dot of y. Okay? Okay. So I'm going to show you that even though in the level of homomorphisms they are the same, because these are objects in the derived category, you actually realize that there is a non-trivial relation, a non-trivial comparison between this object and this object. This object is an object in the derived category. Not only it sees the deformations of G, it also sees the deformations of G if they want to flatten outside of the surface. And it's unavoidable that this has more cohomological information than this one. So there's discrepancy between the two. So you would might you might expect that well then maybe it seems like we have two obstruction theories for the same space and they produce different, different invariants. So this gives me an invariant, maybe if I'm lucky, and this gives me an invariant. Are these things equal? What are the relations between them? I will show you certain situations where in fact they are the same. Even though this object in drug carrier and this object in drug carrier are different. You can show situations. And that is exactly the derived algebraic, that is the derived categorical analog of gauge reduction. Sometimes you can, honest to God, just reduce the obstruction theory of a fourfold modulized space into, or some default modulized space to a d minus one modulized space. I'm going to apply this to the fourfold, in fact, and show you that sometimes your fourfold Dalton Thomas invariant can be literally captured. Let us do this next time because today we close it earlier because there is something going on upstairs. So let's go all, all go up there and then send it. Yeah. Okay. It is. It has the same vibe. Yes, hyperplane theorem and Gramov. The theory actually tells you that. Uh, if you have some hypersurface in an ambient variety, and you're counting uh, genus one, for instance, Gramovian invariance of ambient variety, it can be actually related to genus zero, Gramo reduced Gramovian invariance or something of the hypersurface. All right. Then, then the other one. Where is the other one? The other one. Genus one and genus zero. But these are. Sheets really. And this relationship between this and this is very simple actually. I can just show you. But let's let's do it next time.